welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Happy Tuesday. Um, strange to see you on a Tuesday at three o'clock, but you know, sometimes uh, social media and internet doesn't do exactly what we want it to do, and we make adjustments and switch the time. Um, today I'm going to show you two cards, actually three cards. We're gonna make three different cards. Um, similar, but I'm going to give you some different tips for using the Bouquet of Thanks stamp set or stamp. So it's actually a single stamp. This is in the new annual catalog. And yes, it has a thank you on there, but I'm going to show you how you can use this um, in different ways for uh, cards other than thank you notes. Um, I'm also going to use one of the stamps from the Go To Greetings. If you are new to stamping and stamping up, um, if you are in need of some very basic greetings, and um, I should flip this the other way so you can see these better. Um, if you're just looking for some good overall sentiments, some good variety, if you're new to stamping, new to card making, this is a great set for you go-to greetings. It has happy birthday, thinking of you, just a note, and thank you. But it is, um, those four phrases come in different sizes and different fonts. So super versatile. And um, I'm going to give you some ideas of different ways you can turn this stamp into um, cards for something other than just thank yous. And we're gonna do some coloring, of course, because that's always fun to do with those large stamps. And we'll also be using the new Iridescent Pearls. Okay, a brand new embellishment, and I think you'll see this better when um, I actually use these, but they're, they're not our regular pearls. They have an iridescent quality to them. Um, adding to the sparkle and shine and um, the bling of your cards and paper crafts. So I'm going to switch my camera now to my workspace. While I'm doing that, please share this live video inviting um, other friends and viewers to join us. I hope it's a pretty Tuesday wherever you are here in central Ohio. Um, it's just beautiful outside and uh, I uh, ate my lunch and then I had to run an errand to um, the drugstore. And right across from my drugstore is um, the uh, Hoover Reservoir and Park area. So I um, made a quick detour and decided to do my um, two mile walk or two and a quarter mile walk um, along the reservoir and the path. And I found some great bits of nature, including a beautiful deer um, that was grazing in the grass there, some birds. I saw a blue heron fly into um, like a little grove of trees. Um, it was hard. I've got some photographs to post later, but it was a little hard to photograph him because he was um, kind of in the brush and the trees. All right, let me move some of these things out of the way. And I'm just going to go through and make the different cards and give you some tips for using both the Bouquet of Thanks um, watercolor pencils and um, incorporating the go-to greetings. And like I said, I'm making three cards today, which means I will be giving away three cards today. So I hope you watch all the way through the end. There is a good bit of coloring today, but it's going to go pretty fast. So for this first card, um, you know how much I love to stamp and then um, keep it simple, but add a little bit of coloring just to brighten it. And one of the great ways to do that um, is with our watercolor pencils, mainly the white, just to add some brightness to the tone-on-tone -tone color. I 
One thing I want to mention about using the watercolor pencils, sometimes the name of them, the watercolor pencils, makes people think they have to add water. They have to use um, those clear blender pens. They have to use an aqua painter, something like that. You don't have to. You can use these just like regular color pencils, which is what I'm going to do today. The other thing to note about using watercolor pencils is when you first sharpen your pencils, now mine is quite dull because I've been using it a lot, but I actually like to have mine dull because, and let me show you an example. Here's one that's um, pretty sharp. I may have used it once or something for a little bit, but this is what happens when you're coloring. You start getting, um, what I want to say, it's easier to see your stroke lines, your pencil lines, but as you wear down that tip, it just gives you a smoother overall color without as many, without seeing as many of the color lines. So actually when I first, um, depending on what my project is and what I'm coloring, if I have um, lines of demarcation. There you go, Cindy. Three points for you for being so specific. I love it. Um, but a lot of times, if you know, it's if it's something really small and I want the detail, sure, having that point helps. But if I'm filling in, I kind of like to wear down my tip a little bit so I don't get those lines of demarcation as Cindy informed us. Um, to me, it just gives it a little smoother coloring, okay? So I've got my white flowers now that really brightened it up, didn't it? And then I'm going to use, let's see, I had things divided out here, and now I'm getting them all mixed up. Now I'm going to use Calypso Coral, and I'm just filling in the sign. I think one reason I really, lots of reasons I love the watercolor pencils, but one in particular is they're quick. They're quick to use. If you want some areas a little darker, you just go over them again and you press a little harder. And a lot of times we can just use the lines and drawings in our stamped images to show us where we need to put some um, shading and some darker color. So now I've got a pretty Calypso Coral banner there. And then finally, I'm going to add some color with the garden green pencil. Really quick and easy. Just like that. And um, as we were talking about those lines of demarcation, thank you, Cindy, for giving us that, um, um, that specific turn. Um, on this card, I will show you another way to soften those lines in the coloring is to use one of our blender pens, all right? And you just all you're gonna do is just go over this lightly. Now this is not watercolor paper, so you don't wanna, you know, color, color, color until your paper starts pilling, all right? You just wanna do it quick and gently one time. Can you see, so can you see the difference now? It needs a moment to dry, but can you see the difference between these leaves and this one? It just kind of blends all that together and then intensifies the color. And to clean your blender pens, these are in the annual catalog. Um, 
I want to say they're maybe $12. I'm not sure on the price, but and they come in a package of three. And now I'm just going to finish off this pretty card. Now this is really what I would consider a tone-on-tone -tone card with a pop of color. So I'm going to take this piece And I know you're probably thinking, Mary, what are the measurements of that? And I've just been upstairs working on blog posts, so I've been going, have lots of um, measurements going through my head for the different blog posts. But this is, now what did I just say? Three and a half by four, three and a quarter by four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a half on crumb cake. And I've got another crumb cake layer then that measures three and three eighths by, make sure I have this right, three and three eighths by four and five eighths. Okay. I've already prepared my card base, which is five and a, five and a half by eight and a half inches, and I've scored it at four and a quarter. And I've got two pieces of white cardstock. The one for the inside measures five and a quarter by four inches, right? Pretty standard for me. Occasionally I change that up on the inside, but most often it's five and a quarter by four inches for the inside. And notice that I put my dimensionals between the two layers of the crumb cake cardstock. So now I'm going to adhere this flat to my white. And I'll quickly give you the measurements of that as I check it to make sure I'm telling you the correct thing. So three and seven, three and five eighths, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And I'll be repeating these same um, cutting dimensions as we go through making the other cards. So that's one fun way to use the Bouquet of Thanks stamp set. And then we're going to make one more. It's very, very similar. The difference comes in in the um, uh, banner you see. But again, I'm going to start. Let me wipe this off a little bit. Again, we're going to start with stamping with crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock. And this time I'm going to add more color. So I'm going to start with Rich Razzleberry. Oh, I can see this, I've got a little sharp edge to my pencil tip and I can see those lines of demarcation. Cindy, I'll never be able to hear those words without thinking of you. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever, I mean, the term makes sense, but I don't know that I've ever heard that term before. Learn something new every day, right? Our watercolor pencils come in two packs and um, assortment number one and assortment number two and they do have different colors in each of them they are priced differently because um, assortment one, number one has a few more colors than the second one both have a nice variety of colors but I like having both sets. I'm glad I invested in both sets of the watercolor pencils. Just gives me that many more options. They're super easy to use, last a long, long, long time. 
Oh, a military term. Interesting. Wow, I had no idea. Now, one thing I'm going to do is add even more color. Um, a lot of times we don't think of this, but we can add additional color, additional uh, with a different color, kind of changing it up. So I'm just gonna go over some areas with Gorgeous Grape. And what that's doing is just adding another layer of color. Just like we do with um, water coloring um, with our ink pads and aqua painters or using our um, Stampin' Blends we can put more than one color together. So you get just a little bit different um, look to it. And I do see some of those lines of demarcation. I'm having fun saying that word, <laughs> that phrase. So I'm just gonna soften these a little bit with my blender pen. Kind of blend in all that color, but then those lines, those coloring lines aren't so obvious. The other great thing about using this is there are places where my coloring isn't filled in completely with the watercolor pencil, um, just because I was in a hurry. But doing this will fill in those spots. Look at that, this is where the lines were really heavy. And it just blended all those lines in. You can also see that it blends in that second color I used. So it's not quite as obvious that there's two different colors used. Did I, did I mention this when you're cleaning these? You just wipe the tips on scrap paper, kind of turn them and move them back and forth. When it comes out clear, um, it's clean and it's safe to use in the next color. We also use them a lot of times with our ink pads. If you don't have a Stampin' Write marker of a particular color, this is a great way to um, sort of make your own markers and make do without some of those. Or, you know, most of you, if you have the Stampin' Write markers, you bought them in a collection and we don't sell the individual Stampin' Write markers. Um, like this anymore. They're always in the Stampin' Up! color families. Um, so this is a nice way to, um, to consider a replacement, but it doesn't have to be used with only one color. You just clean it till that um, moisture, or whatever the fluid is, looks clear, and then you're safe to use it with another color. All right, now I'm gonna add some bright granny apple green to my leaves. And this card is gonna take on a whole different look with different colors, with brighter colors, and the change I'm going to make to that thank you banner. I think that's all of them. I'm gonna blend a second green in here. So I'm using Old Olive on top of the Granny Apple Green. I'm using that darker color, mostly on the center of the leaves. Again, this is just another um, way of using the watercolor pencils. You don't necessarily um, have to do d two different colors. I know, doesn't the Granny Apple Green look great with the Razzleberry, the rich Razzleberry? You've got a deep, rich color, and then you've got that bright, that bright Granny Apple Green, but they look so good together. I also really like rich Razzleberry and Old Olive together. Okay, there's my scrap paper. 
I like to clean my blender pens right away so the next time I'm ready to use them, um, I know that they're ready. And then finally, I'm going to use Daffodil Delight and I'm just very quickly going to go over all these teeny tiny little, I don't know, berries or flower buds, I suppose. If I colored them white, they would look like baby's breath. Fun thing about this is you don't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see how fast I'm doing it. You wouldn't even need to color in these smallest ones, but I thought I didn't on the first one. So I thought I want to show you an example of that, of those colored with my second card. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And now I told you I was going to change up the sentiment here. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of scrap paper I do want some, um, this believe it or not is scrap, some things left over from Andrea's bridal shower from the, the game things. But what I'm going to do is ink up and I want basically just, you know, uh, the banner and the area around the banner to be inked. I don't have to ink up the whole stamp. So I'm getting just that banner part in there. And I'm going to stamp it on this piece of basic white. And you can see now why I wanted that scrap paper in there, right? And then I'll use my paper snips to just cut out that banner. And I wanna cut right along the edges of the banner. And I don't care that there's a leaf that's hanging over the banner. I'm gonna pretend I can see the line of the banner behind that leaf and cut out the banner. I know some of you are like me and you don't really mind the fussing cutting as long as, long as we're not doing hundreds and thousands of pieces, but some of you just don't like to fussy cut with your paper snips, but this is quick and easy and it doesn't take long at all. It's just one little step. So now before, what I'm gonna do is put this here. So now that banner really pops, right? But before I do that, I am going to color that, oops, that's the wrong color, isn't it? I'm gonna color the end of that leaf that hangs over the banner. And I see some of those teeny tiny flowers. So I wanna color those with the Daffodil Delight. And now I will put my whole card together. The first thing I'm going to do is use, whoops, this is my sheet of, that I had mini dimensionals on. And you know I don't like to waste those edges, so I just, oops, just trim them, cut them into tiny pieces. We have to, get the most for our money, don't we? Okay. 
And now as I put these together, um, the dimensions are the same as the first card. So this was what, three and a quarter by four and a half, I believe. Yes, three and a quarter by four and a half. I will um, use dimensionals to put this on the next layer, also crumb cake. And that next layer is three and three eighths inches by four and five eighths. And of course you could change up the dimension dimensions of these pieces, make them anything you want. And then I have um, three and seven eighths. Should I have this written down? Three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Of course, when I get this on my blog, the dimensions will be there, or if you need to um, get them the dimensions sooner than that, all you have to do is um, play the replay, which you can find right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nade. And to find all of my Facebook Lives that have been recorded on this site, you just have to, um, on this page, Facebook page, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave, click on the word more. It's near the top under the big banner. And then you click the word videos and they are all there. For the inside, again, I'm using five and a quarter by four inches. I didn't always used to put um, the white or vanilla on the inside, um, but once I started doing it, I have not gone back and I probably never will. Yes, the um, crumb cake is light enough that if you used like a black pen, it would should be easy enough to read, but I think putting your written message on white or vanilla, whatever your um, lightest, neutral color is, is just that much easier for people to read and easier for me to read while I'm writing as well. All right, so there's our first two cards. What do you think? Same cards, but yet, or same, I should say same supplies, same products used, but two completely different cards and give you another option for something you can do with the um, with the banner. All right. Now this time, I'm sure you're thinking, okay, this is pretty, but all you can do is send thank you notes. That's all it is. No, I'm going to show you how you can use other small sentiments. To do this, you're going to, um, you're going to want your stamp to be pretty clean of the ink. You're going to need a, take your pick tool, or if you don't have one, a piercing tool, and then, a, whoops, then a little bit of washi tape. Okay, what's this doing? Let's start that again. So you're going to need a little bit of washi tape. And what I'm going to do is cover up the thank you. All right. Cover up the thank you on that stamp with this little bit of washi tape. So you might have different widths of washi tape. I would pick the thinnest you have. And you're trying to just cover up the words, nothing else. Oops, there's one little spot I missed. That edge of the T. Or I guess it's the U. I'm reading backwards. And then with your piercing tool, just push down the excess washi tape. 
because the only thing I want the washi tape to be covering is those two words, nothing else. And it doesn't stick real tight, but um, it will work. Kind of depends on um, the particular washi tape you have. Some are better quality and stickier than others, okay? So once you've done that, you're going to ink up the whole stamp. Again, I'm using Crumb Cake ink on Crumb Cake cardstock. And I'm gonna take my piercing tool. You know what? I don't see enough ink right on that little part of the banner, so I'm gonna do it. There we go. So using my piercing tool, I'm just going to pull up that washi tape. So now I have a blank banner. So I can find any small um, sentiment or words I could even write something in there. I could put somebody's name. I could put love. But now I have a blank banner. All right. So this is where, um, with the, doing this one simple tip um, or step, we've now made this stamp, this singular stamp, more versatile. And I am using, now lots of sentiments and words won't fit in here. Um, but many of our sets have small words and small sentiments. So for this one, I've chosen just a note from our go-to greetings. So it's um, one of the greetings with the smallest fonts, the smallest type. So hello would fit in here, just a note. I could put in thank you if you just wanted a different font of thank you. The thinking of you and the happy birthday are just barely fit in there, but I bet you can find some others um, sentiments in some of our other stamp sets. And I'll tell you this too, because the neither one of these stamp sets is photopolymer, what you can do to kind of check, or I can just do it right on here. What I did, and I didn't worry about covering up the thank you, what I did instead was, because I'm just practicing here, I wanna see how this sentiment is going to fit. So what you can do is just pull out a different color, um, preferably a dark color, and just stamp over it. So now you can see how well it fits, okay? Or if it doesn't fit and you need to pick something else, right? So now I'm going to clean this off and ink it up with my, put this up here, ink it up with my crumb cake ink. If you wanted a pop of color, you could actually um, stamp the sentiment in coordinating color or just whatever you think, right? Okay, so let's, should we leave this one blank or should we color it too? We could do a super tone on tone, right? I think we should do the coloring personally. What about you? Oh, Stella, you're funny. I didn't say you had to buy the stamp set. <laughs> I get what you're saying though. Same thing happens to me. How tight is the smallest happy birthday? Um, well, we can try it out and see. I like having a variety of sizes of the same sentiment in different um, in the different fonts. You know, because sometimes you want a sentiment to be larger or maybe even be the focal point. Um, and other times you need something small. So let's just try out this happy birthday and see how it does. Can 
I haven't practiced this one. It was just, I was just kind of eyeballing it. So yeah, you can squeeze it in there. It just, just fits in the left, within the left and right margins, okay? How about adding some color? Should we color the flowers and such? Oh, definitely color. Okay. Many, many of you are saying add some color. Let me close this up. All right. So how about um, this time? You know what? Let's go with our, what is this? Oh, that's navy. I don't think I want that. I'm going to go with this Calypso Coral for the flowers this time. And I'm gonna go light with this. I'm not gonna color it as dark as I did the banner on the first card. Just gonna go in here lightly. And, and if you want to get some darker areas in here, you can use the same color and just press a little harder in some of the detailed areas. It's not necessary, but like I said, if you want to do that, you can. Just want to show you a different, a little bit different look you can get by doing that. You see it in there? And I go over all of this coloring very lightly. Again, this is called a blender pen, different than Stampin' Blends and different than an aqua painter. It's called blender pens. All right, and then and I think I'll color in the leaves. <gasps> Jenny, you read my mind. Okay, were you getting that? <laughs> were you getting that? Because I was thinking as I um, was doing the blender pen, I thought, now then this is dry. We can add some Wink of Stella. So another option to enhance our coloring but when you add that wink of stella you do want um, the areas to be dry and not damp so it will hold and Gonna use my white to do some of these teeny tiny little buds or flowers. They're so small, it, it the white hardly makes a difference. It's just lightening them up a little bit, kind of give it the look of baby's breath. Jenny, you're funny. See, now that you've seen me use Wink of Stella a few times, you love it. I love it too.
I always like to have two Wink Stellas, like an extra new one on hand. Because if I want to use it and mine runs out, which it lasts a long time, it really does. I'm so surprised. When I used it for the first time, I was surprised how long they can last. Because you're just using such a small amount. You love it also, Judy. Awesome. Okay, look at that. Just totally different. Totally different. And I think I'll leave the banner just as is, unless somebody has a different suggestion. So here is my Wink of Stella. I think this is dry enough. You know what? Let's just put the card together to be sure that it is dry enough. So again, this size is three and a quarter by four and a half inches. Whoops. I really want to use dimensionals on that. Um, the next size is three and three eighths by four and five eighths. going to put this white on the inside of my card. The inside is, of course, you all know it, right? Five and a quarter by four inches. You can change up the size on the inside, but that's pretty standard. Sometimes I'll add a second layer to the inside. Okay. How about it? We need something behind here. I would suggest, well, I can make a couple of suggestions. I do like this behind it. This is soft suede. Oh yeah, I like that. Now, one thing to note with the color pencils, um, you know, I used mainly rich razzleberry in here with the rich razzleberry cardstock. And you see, they aren't exact, but they go together, right? It's the same tone. So just be aware of that. Here it like here's the Calypso Coral I colored with. But you can see the difference here. The cardstock appears to be super bright, but coloring with the Calypso Coral on the crumb cake has really softened it, really tones it down a lot. To me, this actually looks a little too bright for this. So I'm going to go with this one. And of course I have to remeasure that layer because I usually I have it written down. I don't know what happened to my little sheet here. So four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. Four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. Three and five eighths. And four and seven eighths. So these are the three cards, but before um, I give you the words to comment for the giveaway, I want to show you something um, with the envelopes and the stamp set. There's only one stamp in the bouquet of thanks, but they still call it a stamp set. All right. I think that's just to keep the terminology the same for all the stamps. We refer to them as stamp sets. All right. Super pretty, right? Okay. I've got my white inside. Now, so here's the three cards. What I want to show you next is, let me get this out of the way. When you're stamping the envelopes, you have this large stamp, right? You've got a large stamp. You don't want to put this whole thing on your envelope. You probably don't even want the thank you in there. I like, I'd, uh, rarely, rarely do I put a sentiment on the envelope. 
The reason being is I might put something pretty or fun on the envelope, but I want um, the person receiving my card to be surprised by what the card is for. So what you can do is just stamp a small area. Exactly, Cindy, stamp partially. And so I'll just do that little bit. You can leave it plain like this, or you can fill in the colors to coordinate right there. I'll stamp another one and maybe show you just a little bit more showing on that envelope, a little more of the stamp showing on the envelope. All right, so, and I might as well stamp the third because now the three people who whose names will be chosen to, oh, here's something else we can do. Let's try this. Put it on the flap like that. Okay. And a lot of times when I stamp the back, I do stamp over the flap and the bottom. Um, again, on this one, I'm not going to because I don't want the thank you on the envelope. Okay. Cookie, thanks so much for sharing. And anybody else who has shared or plans to share, I appreciate it very, very much. All right. So there's a couple of choices um, or a couple of ways you can use that large stamp set, but to still put some fun details on your, um, your envelopes. All right, so I'm going to be giving away these three cards. If you would like to receive one of these cards, I would like you to type bouquet of thanks in the comment section now, all right? Type bouquet of thanks in the comments. Anybody who does that, your name will go into the drawing to receive one of the three cards made during this Facebook Live. Okay, I just saw a comment, let me see, it was Jenny Graber says, I never thought of stamping the envelope, how fun. Okay, this is where I learned this. Um, and um, Sarah Douglas, CEO of Stampin' Up, and her mother, Sarah, or uh, Shelly Gardner, who was um, a co-founder and now is the board chair for Stampin' Up, um, Shelly always says, no naked envelopes. That means don't send a plain envelope, which depends on how much I'm stamping. Um, but I think of that every time. And last week when um, Stampin' Up! put on some virtual events sessions for Incentive Trip Achievers, since our, our trip was canceled this year, um, one of the highlights of Stampin' Up! events is when Sarah and Shelly stamp together. And um, that came up again. Shelly said, now remember, no naked envelopes. So she showed her card sample, how to make it, and then proceeded to um, either stamp the envelope or show us a stamped envelope with each of her cards. So that's always fun. All right, bouquet of thanks. All right. Barb says she loves to decorate her. No, cute, no naked envelopes. Yep, no naked envelopes. Remember that. How can you forget, Okay. Next time you put a card in, an, in a plain envelope, you're gonna think, ah, Mary said no naked envelopes, and she got it right from the top from Shelly Gardner. Okay, and just as a reminder, the other stamp set that we used today is Go To Greetings. So I, lo I love these, super elegant, right? These large ones, but I, lo I love all the fonts, really. But it's fun to have the sentiments in three different uh, fonts and three different sizes. Okay, that's it for me today. And because it's a Tuesday, that means I will see you tomorrow as well. I hope you will join me tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. for some more creative inspiration. 
If you need assistance with placing an order or if you don't have a demonstrator you work with and you are in need of a catalog, please message me and I am happy to help you. In the meantime, if you have any questions um, or need some assistance, please let me know. Thanks and have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye-bye.